Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another video. And before I would like to begin, I would like to say thank you for all of your support and comments. So basically, it's been a month since I last did my video. And for that, I apologize since I was a bit slightly occupied with some physical uh, workshops regarding the app sheet with certain people. And there's a lot of things that I've learned so far and there's a lot of things that I would like to share with you. And for today is we are going to entertain um, Ami Faisal's comment. So basically what he wants to do in AppSheet is to create a custom running number or based on certain prefix. And what he wants is to ensure that the number or the document number changes or adds up based on the number of times any the document is being created for the same year and month. And when there is a new month uh, approaches, the number of the document itself will reset back to one. So without further ado, let's check it out. All right, guys. So for the purpose of our tutorial today, I have created some of the columns. As you can see, I have the unique ID document ID, creation date, year, month, and document number. So this will be relevant for our case. And once you have this ready, you can head on to create the app in appsheet.com. And once you are done that, uh, head on to data. And let's start with document ID, all right? So the expression is as follows. So the, again, this is basically based on the requirement or request. So what I'm using here is concatenate. The first prefix is KKM. And of course, next will be the year. So I'm using substitute tax year creation date. So the reason why I'm using substitute there's tendencies of the year extracted from the creation date comes back with a comma. So if there is a comma, we will substitute it to an empty or blank space. Or basically it's nothing. Then we have the slash. Next would be the month number. Hence why I'm using month from creation date. So this enables you to extract the number, the month number. Say for example, if it's July, then the month number will be seven. Then we have slash, and we will extract the document number from the transaction. All right, so for year, it's very simple. We'll be using year from creation date. So this will extract the year from the creation date. Same goes to month. The only difference is just change the expression to month. And one of the important elements of this tutorial is the document number. So I have provided an expression here on screen. So what it does is it will count the number of times a, the same transaction uh, for the same month and year is created. And for every transaction there is, it will add a sequential number. Say for example, if it's uh, the same uh, for the same month and year, but there is no transaction, it will become one. And hence, if there is the similar number, uh, similar month and year, uh, it will then add the additional one from the previous um, document number. Now, how would this look like in real case scenario? All right. Let's say I will add a new transaction and today is the 14th of September. So the document ID will then be KKM 2024 is the year. September is uh, nine and the calendar number slash one since there's no transaction for the same month and year. 
sense, you can see the year is 2024, month is 9, and document number is 1. So I'll just head on to save this. So you can see there's one transaction for September. Now, if I were to add a new transaction for the same month and year, let's click on add and you will see document ID is actually adding one right at the end, which is representing the document number. Since it's re uh, referencing to the same year and month, so that's why it's adding one. As you can see, document number now is two. So if I just keep on repeating, adding for the same month, the numbers will add on as we go. Now, let's say new month comes, which is October. So then it will be KKM 2024 10 represents October and document number will be one. So you can rinse and repeat the same process for every time when you create a new transaction and it will then generate a prefix with the relevant month and document number. So I hope this helps uh, and don't forget this is something that you can modify on your own relevant to your cases. So all the best. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thank you very much for your support. And there'll be more videos uh, regarding AppSheet and I'll be introducing a new series which is Luca Studio in the coming in the upcoming days. Uh, so there'll be an additional series that I'll be introducing, which where we'll discover on how to use Luca Studio as part of our dashboarding needs. So don't forget to drop your comments on what else you would like to see in the next video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so, so that you'll find more videos like this in the future. I'm Aris Azha. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. So take care. Bye-bye.